Throughout history, people have often believed that morality comes from religion. They've been told that without a God watching over us, humans would have no reason to be good. That without divine commands, society would fall apart. But this idea is not only wrong, it deeply misunderstands where morality actually comes from. Long before organized religion, humans lived in groups. We hunted together, gathered food together, and raised children together. Cooperation wasn't something we learned from holy books. It was a natural part of survival. If you cheat, steal, or hurt others in a small tribe, you risk being cast out. Exclusion could mean death. That basic truth shaped the way humans learned to treat each other. Fairness, empathy, and kindness didn't need to be written on stone tablets. They were written into our biology. Today, science helps us understand how this works. Neuroscience shows that our brains reward us for cooperation. When we help others, we feel good because chemicals like dopamine and oxytocin are released. Evolution shaped these feelings because they helped our ancestors survive. The better we treated each other, the stronger our groups became. This isn't something unique to humans. We see similar behaviors in animals like dolphins, elephants, and primates. They show empathy, they care for sick members of their group, and sometimes even mourn their dead. These animals don't have religion, but they still behave in ways we would call moral. Sam Harris once said, Morality is about the well-being of conscious creatures. This simple idea shows why we don't need a god to explain right and wrong. If an action increases the well-being of others, it is good. If it causes unnecessary suffering, it is bad. We can measure harm. We can observe happiness. These things don't require faith. They require reason. Religion often claims that without belief in God, anything would be allowed. But even religious people ignore many of their own scriptures. The Bible, for example, contains rules about stoning people for working on the Sabbath or wearing mixed fabrics. Almost no one follows these laws today. Why? Because as societies grew, people realized that these rules caused harm rather than preventing it. We evolved better standards by thinking about what actually makes people suffer or thrive. Christopher Hitchens pointed out that religious morality often comes with built-in cruelty. He said, Religion allows people who would otherwise be kind to carry out acts of great evil because they think they have divine permission. Throughout history, people have killed, enslaved, and oppressed others in the name of their gods. The Crusades, witch hunts, honor killings, all committed by people who believed they were doing something righteous. When we base morality on reason instead of religion, we are forced to think carefully about the consequences of our actions. We have to ask, does this help or harm others? Does it increase freedom or oppression? Does it respect the rights of individuals? These questions help us build a morality that can adapt and improve as we learn more about the world. Daniel Dennett explains that religion often gives people answers that are easy but false. He says, There's simply no reason to expect that traditions handed down over thousands of years are automatically correct. Many of these traditions were formed when people didn't understand how diseases spread, how the brain works, or how societies function. Today, we have the tools to examine our actions carefully. We don't have to rely on outdated beliefs. Consider slavery. For centuries, many religions defended slavery using their holy texts. The Bible, the Quran, and other scriptures include rules for how to treat slaves, but none of them outright condemned slavery as immoral. It was not religion that ended slavery. It was reason, empathy, and hard work by people who challenged the old beliefs. Science helped show that differences in skin color, language, or culture are meaningless when it comes to human value. Science also helps us understand moral problems that religion never addressed. Modern issues like climate change, artificial intelligence, and genetic engineering were not mentioned in any holy book. Yet these are some of the most important moral questions of our time. Through science, we study the effects of our actions on future generations, ecosystems, and other species. We can predict consequences, measure risks, and make informed decisions that reduce harm and increase well-being. Another problem with religious morality is its inflexibility. If a holy book says something, many believers think it can never be questioned. But science thrives on questioning. Every scientific truth is open to challenge if new evidence appears. This constant self-correction allows our moral understanding to grow over time. 
For example, we now know that being gay is not a choice or a sin. It is a natural part of human variation. But for centuries, many religions condemned homosexuality. These condemnations caused enormous suffering. It was scientific research in biology, psychology, and medicine that helped many people understand that same-sex attraction harms no one and should not be punished. Science led to compassion, where religion often led to cruelty. Carl Sagan once said, Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. The idea that morality requires a god is an extraordinary claim. And yet there is no evidence that morality depends on belief. In fact, some of the most secular societies on earth, like Sweden, Denmark, and the Netherlands, have very low crime rates, high levels of happiness, and strong protections for human rights. These societies show that morality does not collapse without religion. It flourishes when people focus on reason, fairness, and empathy. In many ways, religious morality can even create more problems. When people believe that their moral rules come from a perfect God, they may feel justified in forcing those rules on others. This leads to laws that deny women control over their own bodies, persecute people for their sexual orientation, and punish those who question authority. These are not acts of kindness or justice. They are acts of control. Richard Dawkins once asked why an all-knowing God would care more about what people eat, who they sleep with, or what words they say than about curing disease or ending hunger. These small, often petty rules reflect human prejudice, not divine wisdom. A truly moral system focuses on reducing suffering and increasing happiness, not enforcing ancient taboos. Science gives us tools to do exactly that. Medicine helps us heal the sick. Psychology helps us understand mental suffering. Economics helps us reduce poverty. Environmental science helps us protect the planet for future generations. All of these fields improve human well-being without needing any religious doctrine. They rely on observation, evidence, and careful thinking. One of the strongest signs that morality does not depend on religion is the behavior of non-believers. Atheists and agnostics live moral lives, raise children, care for others, and contribute to society. They do these things not because they fear divine punishment, but because they understand that kindness, honesty, and fairness make life better for everyone. The absence of belief does not create chaos. It often creates responsibility. One of the key reasons science leads to better morality is that it helps us escape tribal thinking. Religion often divides people into believers and non-believers, saved and damned, righteous and wicked. This division creates conflict. Wars, terrorism, and discrimination have often been fueled by people convinced that their God is the only true one. But science doesn't care where you were born or what you believe. It focuses on facts that apply to everyone. When we look at DNA, for example, we see that all humans share over 99% of their genetic material. We are one species, one family. This understanding encourages us to treat each other with respect, not suspicion. Religion also tends to focus on obedience. In many faiths, morality means following the rules set by a higher power, even if those rules make no sense or cause harm. But real morality isn't about obedience. It's about understanding why something is right or wrong. When a child avoids hurting another child because they understand it causes pain, that's real morality. They are not obeying out of fear. They are acting out of empathy. Science encourages this kind of thinking by teaching us to ask questions, look for evidence, and consider the effects of our actions. Sam Harris has argued that we can think about morality like health. There are many ways to be healthy, but we also know that some things clearly harm us, like drinking poison or starving. In the same way, there are many ways to live moral lives, but some actions, like torture or genocide, clearly increase suffering. Science helps us identify which actions lead to flourishing and which lead to misery. We don't need a God to tell us that torture is wrong. We can see the suffering it causes with our own eyes. Another important point is that science is not perfect, but it corrects itself. Religion often resists change. For centuries, people believed the earth was the center of the universe because religious leaders said so. When science showed this was false, some religious authorities fought to suppress the truth. But science moved forward because it is built to question itself.
This humility makes science a better guide for morality. We can change our views as we learn more. We can admit mistakes and improve. This flexibility helps us create a more compassionate and just world. In contrast, religious texts are frozen in time. They reflect the beliefs and knowledge of ancient people who lived thousands of years ago. These texts do not address many of the moral questions we face today. For example, issues like artificial intelligence, global pandemics, climate change, and nuclear weapons have no place in ancient scriptures. Yet, they are some of the greatest moral challenges we now face. Science gives us the tools to study these problems and search for solutions based on evidence, not ancient myths. Even the idea of divine punishment is flawed. If people only behave morally because they fear hell or hope for heaven, that is not true morality. A person who refrains from stealing because they might be punished is not the same as someone who values honesty because they understand its importance to trust and community. Fear-based morality is fragile. Remove the fear and the behavior may collapse. But when morality is based on understanding, it becomes strong and lasting. Another problem with religious morality is that different religions disagree on what is right and wrong. One faith may say it is moral to eat certain foods, while another bans them. One allows polygamy, another forbids it. One says you must pray five times a day, another says you must attend church weekly. These contradictions show that religious morality is often about cultural tradition, not universal truth. Science, on the other hand, seeks truths that apply everywhere, regardless of culture or geography. Christopher Hitchens once noted that many acts of kindness and cruelty happened long before religions appeared. He said, We are not moral because of religion. We are moral in spite of it. The evidence supports this. Children show empathy even before they can speak. Babies as young as six months old show preference for helpful over harmful behavior. Morality arises naturally from our social nature. Religion may sometimes encourage good behavior, but it did not create morality. Morality is older and deeper than any faith. It is also worth noting that many religious people do good things not because of their religion, but despite parts of it. When religious believers fight for human rights, help the poor, or support equality, they often do so by ignoring or reinterpreting parts of their scriptures that promote violence, sexism, or hatred. This shows that even religious morality evolves, not because of divine command, but because human reason challenges harmful ideas and replaces them with better ones. Some argue that without religion, life would be meaningless. But meaning does not come from ancient texts or supernatural beings. It comes from our relationships, our experiences, and our contributions to the world. We create meaning by loving others, creating art, discovering new knowledge, and helping those in need. The absence of a God does not leave us empty. It gives us the freedom and responsibility to build meaningful lives ourselves. Science helps us see this more clearly. It shows us the vastness of the universe and the incredible chance that we exist at all. As Carl Sagan said, we are a way for the cosmos to know itself. This understanding can inspire awe, humility, and a deep sense of connection to all living things. We don't need a divine creator to feel wonder. The natural world is full of beauty and mystery that science helps us explore. Finally, when we let go of religion as the source of morality, we open the door to a more inclusive and compassionate world. We stop dividing people into believers and non-believers. We judge actions by their consequences, not by who commits them. We base our moral decisions on evidence, empathy, and reason. This allows us to protect the rights of women, children, minorities, and marginalized groups who have often been oppressed in the name of religion. In the end, morality is too important to leave in the hands of ancient books or supernatural beliefs. It belongs to all of us. Science offers a path forward, one that is thoughtful, flexible, and rooted in our shared humanity. It asks us not to obey, but to understand. Not to follow, but to reason. Not to divide, but to unite. And that, more than any commandment or doctrine, is the true foundation of a moral life. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.